Okay, so welcome guys, psyched to have you, super excited for this call. I know Emily is too, we were just chatting. It's her first like non-personal team, team call. Um, and Emily is a three-star diamond coach. She is an army wife. She is a success club 10 all-star at 20 months. Um, she hasn't been a coach long enough to be a legend and to me like I've just watched Emily really knock it out of the park like I specifically reached out to her because I feel like I just see her consistency um, I see her like social media following and I see her doing like the droplets of what coaching has done for her and her family and she's just so consistent and I feel like relatable, you know, she's a stay at home mom. This is her full time gig besides raising her child. Um, and she's really been able to grow an amazing business. And I hope that, you know, you guys really relate to what she has to offer. I feel like we've been in the business or I started in June, 2014. I'm going to guess we've been in the business around. I started at the very end of August of 2014. Okay. So a couple months off. Um, so yeah, so I'm really, really, really excited. I, like I said, I really hope you guys are too. I hope you get some nuggets. I hope you have your notes ready. And, um, Emily, I think I'm going to let you take it away and put myself on. Sounds yeah, good. All right. I'm so excited. Thank you for having me, Jillian. Um, it's good to get this under my belt and over with. Cause like Jillian said, like I'm all about being relatable. Um, I'm no one special. Um, I just decided to run with this and it's done great for my family. So I'm really excited to share with you guys. Um, I'm going to hop over to screen share really quick. I already tested this with Jillian, so we should be good. All right. Let's see. Can you guys see my screen? Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. All right. So tonight's topic is going to be recruiting. Um, I don't need to go over my about me because Jillian did such a great job. Um, but I'm going to give you some tips uh, really quickly. Um, so the word recruiting to me seems a little scary, um, almost like it's sort of an icky word a little bit. Um, I like to think of it more as sponsoring or giving an opportunity to someone. And it's really helpful to keep that in mind as you present this to somebody. Um, I typically recruit about five to six new coaches a month. Um, I think it's really the most exciting part of the business. Uh, but I always get new coaches who are so strong at recruiting um, new challengers. Uh, they get so excited. They hit success club. Uh, but when it comes to um, recruiting, they feel set back, almost like they're nervous. Like, how do I do this? Uh, so if you feel that way, you're not alone at all. Um, I feel like when we first get started as coaches, we're all like, you know, what do I do? We look to our upline. Uh, we look at other top coaches um, for examples on how to put it out there. And I could tell that when I did that when I first started, it just really wasn't me. It wasn't working for me. Um, and I didn't really come into my own yet. I feel like when I did find myself, it really just started to fall into place. Um, so I wanted to share a couple tips. So tip number one is content, content, content. Um, where was I? Um, no matter what you're posting on whatever social media platform, uh, for me, Facebook is like my jam. Um, Instagram has been good to me, uh, but Facebook is my main platform that I use. Uh, I feel like you really get out what you put in. So if your recruiting posts are all about discount coaching, uh, that's what you're going to get in return. You're going to attract people that just want to discount on Shakeology. Um, uh, when I first started, I was so desperate for coaches um, that that's what I put out there. I mean, I wanted to take anybody that would accept the opportunity. And did I get coaches that way? Absolutely, I did. Um, but not business working coaches. It hurt my cycles. Um, I was sitting pretty for a while with probably just 10 active coaches and none of them were working the business. So Diamond was not happening for me. Um, I sat there for a really long time just like, you know, what is going on? Um, when I finally did hit diamond though, I realized that, you know, the saying quality over quantity, it is so true. Um, I was heartbroken at times to the point of tears when I would see my coaches just giving up or not caring about the business like I did. Um, 
this business was and still is my life and my full-time job. Um, it's something I love. So it really hurt when I didn't see others being as passionate about it as me. And I'm sure some of you can relate. I see it a lot when my coaches come to me. They're like, you know, like, why can't I like this spark in people to just want this like I do? And it's because you're not attracting people that are feeling the same way as you. Um, so I immediately switched my mindset. I am like, who do I want to work with? You know, I'm a mom. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I want to work with other moms. I want to work with moms who want to be home with their babies, who are willing to put in the work and create this life of freedom because that's what I did. And I'm very, very passionate about it. Um, so that's what I want to attract. Um, so that's what I put out there. I reworded my posts. I used different keywords like rock stars or dreaming mamas or go getters. Um, Mindy wonder was awesome for that. Um, she was someone I really looked up to cause she worded her posts great, you know, like go getters. I mean, that's her team. Um, so I always looked to her, um, for uh, examples for that. Um, so what I put out there in the universe, the universe is going to get back to me. So I reshifted my focus. I'm like, I want people that want to work this because if I don't, we're going to get nowhere. I'm just going to sit there with active coaches and yes, you need active coaches to go diamond. So don't get me wrong, but you do not want to build your team with just discount coaches, balance them out. All right. So think about who you want to work with, find people like you and actually want to be friends with them. I think it's super important to find people that are like you, um, people that you click with, um, because you won't be successful unless others are successful too. Um, and to really, really be successful, you need to enjoy the people that you're gonna be working with every single day. All right, so we're on to tip number two. Um, this one may seem super small to you guys, but it makes the biggest difference. Um, I have coaches on my team who so often come to me saying, you know, I put these now hiring posts out there and I get nothing like crickets immediately. My next question is, you know, have you reached out to anybody, you know, and most of the time their answer is no. So a lot of my recruiting comes from behind the scenes. Uh, at least once a week when I sit down for my power hour, I go to my profile, I click on my friends list, you know, and I scroll through, um, takes a while. you know, if you're expanding your network, like you should be, there should be a lot of friends there. Um, I go through and I make a list, you know, about 50 people or so um, that I would like to have on my team. And I use that list throughout the week to stay focused strictly on them so that I'm not scrolling aimlessly during my power hour. You know, I'm staying focused on the prize right here. Um, sometimes it's people, you know, that have shown interest on my now hiring posts or someone that always is liking my beach body post. Um, I'm a pen and paper kind of gal, so I have like a million notebooks with tons of lists that I go through. Um, but really just find what works for you. Excel, Google Sheets, pen and paper, you know, whatever works for you, make that list and use it. Um, if it's not someone that I talk to often, I'll start at the top of my list, go down, you know, head over to their page, see what's been up with their lives, you know, like build myself in on what's going on in their life. Um, I like a picture of theirs. I comment on the picture. You know, I even ask a question on something on their page to get a conversation sparking because I just want them to know I'm interested in their life. Um, and most of the time I am because I'm directing towards people that, you know, I'm actually interested in something we have in common, you know, another mom, another army wife. Um, and plus people love conversation. They love to talk. If you've ever post like a, a question or something on your profile you notice you get like a lot more comments than you do on anything else because people like to voice their opinion and when they see you asking they feel great about that um, and then from that point before I get off topic uh, when I go to reach out and invite them to an open house group like Jillian said you guys are having soon um, or you know like if I just randomly ask them you know girl have you ever thought of coaching because you know you be really great at it because you know fill in the blank find something from their life like you know I'm looking for more or I really need to get into shape sort of thing and then it won't be as weird when you reach out I mean I get a lot of people saying you know I cold message like 15 people today and I'm just like have you tried to build relationships I'll keep going sorry um and then um each person I communicate with is different. Um, they all live different lives. They all have different situations. And I know there are tons of scripts out there like for different situations that you can use. And I think scripts are great to cover the basics. Um, but I really feel like 
I go off of how I'm feeling in that conversation, the vibe I'm getting from them, um, what I've learned from them so far from looking at their page or just talking to them through a PM. I'm trying to figure out how coaching could help them and making that vis visualization for them to be like, you know, like maybe this could be for me sort of thing. Um, but inviting is so important, you guys. Like that is why it's one of the vital behaviors. And it can be very scary. I mean, it still scares me sometimes. I won't lie. But when you're doing this, you really need to remember that and have the mindset that this is not for you. This is for them. Um, you're giving them the opportunity to legitimately change their lives. Um, you're gifting them and not the other way around. I mean, if nobody reached out to me, we would still be a one income family. Um, we wouldn't be living in this house because we couldn't afford it off of the army income. Um, we are much more free because I took this opportunity because someone took the time to reach out for me. So that's how you need to think about it. Um, don't be scared. Don't feel like you're annoying people. You go into it with an open heart and you share that with people and you share how it's helped you. Even if it's something so little and you're a new coach, just think of that one thing that has happened to you that changed for you. I think that's so important. All right. Tip number three. All right, breadcrumbs. <laughs> so weird, but this is probably my favorite thing about social media, and I don't know why. Um, so we all know it's super important to be posting, like, now hiring posts, challenge group posts throughout the week. Um, but breadcrumbs are a great way for you to talk about coaching without actually having to make your posts all about Beachbody or, you know, like, taking the time to write out a paragraph about coaching. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to share a few examples on this slide for you guys in case you're like, why the hell is this woman talking about breadcrumbs tonight? Um, but basically a breadcrumb is just throwing a sentence or two in your caption about coaching. Uh, so mine, like on the left, you see, if you follow me on Snapchat, sorry, not sorry, lip syncing videos all day, feeling super blessed to have a job where Tuesday feels no different than a Friday. And then on the right, it's a uh, Sunday, you sweet, sweet thing. I used to dread you, not anymore. Um, I, or like, just throw it out there. Just say, you know, I'm really grateful today. You know, I don't have to call in sick to take care of my babies. Or I'm really grateful for this extra income that helped pay for, you know, fill in the blank. But continue the rest of the post with whatever's going on in your life. Um, breadcrumbing works so well for me, possibly even better than my now hiring posts. Um, I sneak them in pretty often, almost every single day, because I'm sharing my normal life outside of Beachbody with that little hidden gem of a breadcrumb. Uh, and I think it works so well because people see that daily and it starts to build up on them. And they're like, you know, this woman is staying home with her baby. She doesn't hate Mondays. She's drinking freaking wine and dancing in her kitchen on a Tuesday. You know, I want that. Like something so little as a breadcrumb in your post can literally flip that switch in someone you've been talking to, but said no to coaching before. So try and give that a shot this week. Um, don't copy someone else, be genuine and raw. Like these moments are not planned for me. They just happen, you know, like I'm drinking my wine at night and like, I'm like, you know what? I'm so dang lucky. I don't have to wake up in the morning or I'm having my coffee in the morning and snuggling with my daughter. And I'm like, I am lucky. I don't have to rush out of this house. And I know it's not like that for everybody, but you just got to look at your situation and find what's going to work for you and just make it small, but do it often. And it's going to, People notice it. People watch even if you don't even think about it. I promise you because it's worked for me. It leads to conversation. You get messages. And people like that. All right. Tip number four. Creating opportunities to connect. Uh, this is going to be one of the last tips. Um, I heard this quote at Summit last year and it really, really stuck with me. Um, it's been jotted down in my notebooks ever since and I really like to reflect on it. Um, be intentional with your business. Believe you have something of value you can offer. I mean, that's so good, right? I loved it when I heard it. Um, you should always be leading your conversation with belief. When you start conversation with someone, be confident. Be proud. I mean, I remember when I was first starting, like, I was scared to tell people what coaching was about. Like, who am I, a new coach, to be telling someone to join me and do this? But you really just need to stop and believe it. And they say, fake it till you make it. And I'm telling you, honey, fake it till you make it because that's the way it goes. And it's going to help you. And it's going to help your confidence. If you believe it, it's going to happen. Um, 
But if you're feeling nervous and unsure, they're going to catch that vibe from you and it's going to put them off. Just lead the conversation like you run the world. And if they say no, not today, they're going to be missing out on something really, really great. Um, another thing is run open houses. I know Jillian's going to be running them for you. Um, but I run a monthly one for my team and I suggest to them, you know, like ask me for the outline, create your own outline. Like if you have a team below you already, take it and run with it. Make it a smaller open house group. It's never too early to start being a leader. I mean, if you guys are in a push to diamond group right now, that's what you're going to have to be doing is running these things for your team. So don't ever be scared to just take it and run with it. Um, another thing I love to do, I learned from Angelica, who's my coach, Angelica Glass. She's the queen of this. Um, find groups that you want to join um, outside of the beach body. Um, mom groups, wife groups. I know personally I'm obsessed with home decorating, so I'm in like a million of those and a million LuLaRoe groups. I'm rocking my leggings right now as we speak. Um, but I never actually post beach body related things in there. Um, that's a mistake I've seen a couple of my coaches make. Um, it's a turn off. Um, I use these groups to create friendships. Um, and I'm not just talking to become a coach. I'm talking about actual friendships. I mean, as an army wife, that's something that I need. And I think anybody in general needs friends. And I ask questions. I interact with people. You know, I scope them out. And then I add them as friends. And they can see my posts from there on out. Um, one friend I actually made is here in Fort Bliss with me now. I just moved here about a month ago and she's watching my daughter for me and she's one of my coaches now. Um, but you really never know until you reach out and communicate with people who share common interests with you. You'll be really surprised because that's really part of this is gaining trust with people and becoming friends. I mean, I don't want anybody on my team that I can't trust or someone that I can go to to talk to about something that's not even beach body related. Like me and my coaches, we talk about everything. So that's super important to me. Um, and last but not least, we want to stay in recruiting mode. Always be sharing the coaching opportunity and how it's a part of your life and how it's affected you. Because if growing this business is your goal, which I'm sure it is if you're on this call, um, this is your baby. Um, my business is my baby and every day I take the time to share it and nurture it and the only way to grow is to grow together um, if I take a step back for a few days and I forget to post a recruiting post or <clears throat> if I forget to reach out to somebody you know and follow up with them I can feel the lack of energy in my team I can feel um, me slacking and it hurts me because this business is important to me and it means the world to me and I wouldn't be where I am today without it. So you always need to keep that in mind that this is not just some sort of hobby. Um, you're here on this call, you're in a push to diamond group. This is important to you and you need to treat it like a business if that is your goal. Um, so I think that's it for that slide. Oops, sorry. I accidentally went too far. All right. So last slide, um, this is the end of the call. I hope I didn't go too far, um, but I thought this was important to add. Um, exceeding expectations, yes guys, I totally spelled expectations wrong. Don't judge, um, but I love this quote too. It's not about the title, it's about your level of service. Um, always deliver on promises to your team, to your challengers, and give them time to love. Take time to grow yourself and mentor others through your PD and your training. Always be sharing what you learn um, because we succeed when everyone else succeeds. Um, invest in others and give them your heart and care for them. And never forget to make that mindset switch from me to we. Use we as much as possible. It's building a team culture, making your potentials feel like they're not only joining as a coach, but they're joining a family. And that really, really makes all the difference. So. Don't ever forget that because that's something that it took me a long time to learn was that I felt like I was in this alone. Um, when I first signed up, my coach quit. Um, I outranked my coach and then she quit and I was lost. And luckily Angelica ended up being my coach and we became best friends. And ever since I've never been in this alone, we've been together and that's super important. So find a success partner, reach out to your upline. Don't ever feel like you're alone. Okay. I think that was all I had. I thought it was going to take me a lot longer than it did. I hope I didn't rush. Did I do that, Julie? No, that was amazing. I mean, I hope I saw a lot of notes written. Um, I, I was like, 
a lot of I, we were just talking about breadcrumbs the other day actually oh, and it's been oh, like a, breadcrumbs. yeah it's been a huge topic of conversation for those that are in the sprint to diamond group i've been making them get crummy every single day um oh, yes. I just, I really 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 important and um there was actually a post i was telling them in the the a group called The Wall, which for those of you that yeah. don't know, that's the corporate five star and above group. And there were girls in there that were like, I don't ever invite people, which don't do that, guys. Yes. I only, I'm just telling you, there are people that are at a level in their business where they don't have to invite people. They said they literally just breadcrumb. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not there yet, but I'd like to be able to breadcrumb to the point where my invites are more solid, you know? And like I, say. I like, when I first started as a beach body coach, was that almost two years ago, Jillian? It was so new to my audience, beach body, the whole entire idea that I really did not have an issue like recruiting. This was something that was so foreign and like exciting to people. It was like brand new to them. So like, I didn't have that issue. But like you said, like when your warm market runs out, you know, I had to go back to the basics. Like I had to invite people. And I noticed that when I didn't invite people for a week or so, that my business was slow, that I was working really, really hard to hit success club 10 every single month. So it's super important. Like Jillian said, like no matter where you are, don't stop inviting because you're planting seeds for the next month. And that really pays off. Yeah, the biggest mistake, I'll open up to questions in one second, but the biggest mistake I see people make is when they don't see success right away, they stop. And that's like the worst thing you can do because sometimes it takes like a month or two for your audience to catch up or build trust or see that what you're doing is working for you financially or physically or yes. whatever. So like seriously, the worst thing, like, I mean, I'll start – Showing you guys like the my post from when I first started in June. Like I'm hoping my time my was starts. so bad, so bad. But like so I just, bad, like stock photo after stock photo. Like join me now. Like here's my link, sort of thing. And now I'm just like, be your freaking self, Emily. Like there's nothing else that people want to see other than you. And it's changed my business drastically when I took a step back and was like, quit trying so freaking hard and just share your damn story. People are gonna love it, and they do. Yeah. All right, do you guys have questions? Anyone? Is anyone awake? I know it's scary, so don't be scared. Just take ask. yourself off mute if you have questions. I think I muted everyone during the call. Sorry, I'm drinking wine. I was nervous. <laughs> anyone? Nothing? You guys got it? I hope I didn't talk too fast. That's like one of my things that I got to work on. No. Just like you guys, I'm working on things. <laughs> Nothing? So my guess, I'm more of a discussion, let alone a question. I really liked how you brought up the idea um, about when you're joining other groups not to be Beachbody, and I failed that epically a couple times. Um, I was just like, ooh, somebody invited me to a group. New sales, how exciting. <laughs> um, <laughs> I taught myself the hard way a few months ago. Um, but what... What other things do you do when you're in those groups to, to build those relationships then to blend in them and actually making them Facebook friends? Um, basically, I'll scroll through a group um, and I'll find different posts that like I can relate to. Like if I'm in a home decor group and someone's like, oh, I love this. Like they post something they just bought or like ask for an opinion on this. You know, I always chime in. Um, I give my opinion. You know, I'm like, girl, if I'm in like a clothing group or something, I'm like, girl, that outfit is so cute. Like I need that. Like where did you get that sort of thing? I'm interacting with people as much as I possibly can. Um, and from there, I just become a familiar face to them. You know what I mean? Like um, they see Emily Simmons popping up in this group more than once. Uh, sometimes I'll even just post myself in that group. And when people see your face repetitively and you're interacting with each other, it's just natural that you're going to be like, oh, I kind of want to be this girl's friend on Facebook, you know, like see what's going on sort of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So just interact as much as possible. I mean, don't feel bad about throwing Beachbody out there. When I first started, I'm pretty sure I threw an ad on Craigslist for coaching. Um, so don't feel like you're the only one going through that. But just be real, you know, just like be your normal self outside of Beachbody. Because sometimes when we start as a coach, we really forget that there's other parts of us outside of Beachbody because we're trying so hard to make this work. 
Um, so don't forget that you have other parts of yourself and that you still want to make friends and those friends can potentially be coaches. Yeah, I would say like, just to add to that, like don't join with an ulterior motive. Like if you hate quilting, don't join a quilting group, you know, like does that make, like make sure to join groups that you would actually like to join and know something about or whatever. Like I join like all dog groups because I like dogs. So I love that you love dogs, Jillian. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, <laughs> but really like seriously, like it should be like stuff that you're, you're genuinely, you're genuinely interested in. And if you don't know what those things are, like start thinking about it and, you know, we just That's another thing I should have added to this. And I thought about it before it was too late to really just make a list. Um, I'm going to send Jillian a visual I made uh, for one of my teams, for one of my trainings about branding yourself, um, coming up with a list, like making an actual visual of your face, plus all these things that describe you outside of Beachbody. Um, and that really helps you one, form your posts to become relatable to your audience, but also to find groups to interact in as well. So I'll have to dig that out for you, Jillian. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I would almost like it suggest, unless you want to, for your own biz, like your own self, I would almost not suggest joining like diet or fitness groups. Like No, too much drama almost. I feel like. Yeah. Because everyone's going to be putting their two cents in sort of thing. I got myself kicked out of one like two weeks ago because I posted I was doing a couch to 5K and she's like, you can't advertise. I was like, advertise a free app on your iPhone? Okay. Oh, man, wrong group to join. Yeah, so I was like, they're very, very sensitive about that stuff, I feel like. so. Yeah. So just find a couple things that describe you, things that you're interested in. Like, I like to play guitar. I haven't found any cool guitar groups yet, but if you find one, let me know. Um, just think of all your hobbies and just find people that are interested because, like I said, it's going to be a million times easier to build a massive tribe of successful people if they're people that you can relate with and talk to like you've known them forever. Like, it's going to make all the difference in the world. Yeah, for sure. Can anyone have any other questions for Emily? No, Katie's smiling at something. Someone must have messaged her. <laughs> She's pumped. <laughs> no. Anything? Okay. Well, I'll let you guys go then. Well, thank you, Emily, for coming and sharing. Thank you your... for letting me do my first call. Yeah. I feel I'm better now. <laughs> sharing your tips and tricks. I thought they were great. Um, you know, just another reminder, feel free. The, the post, the welcome post for the intro group is up. So if you add someone, just tag them in it so that they sort of know what to expect over the next three days starting on Monday. Um, and I'm hoping to still be able to do those posts, but I may turn it over to someone else if I'm like climbing a pole somewhere. So um, I'll let you guys, I'll let you guys know about that. Good luck, Jillian. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Oh gosh.